Kevin, you're up. Hey, Bart. How are you? How's it going? Good. Uh, so I have a handout of MGM Springfield. Okay. Still a place I haven't been to. I did put in a nice little session, though, at Chasers yesterday on December 10th in New Hampshire. And I w it was just awesome. I just strolled in there right at 12.30 p.m. And the 2-5 No Limit PLO mix game started. And I played for six hours. I was home for dinner. Picked up a nice two grand. Very, very nice. But it seems to be inconsistent. The reason why I bring that up is because, again, I always hear that these games are going at MGM Springfield. But it's about an hour and a half away from me sometimes they even have some bigger games too yeah that's fair i used to play at chasers uh, during covid it's about an hour and a half for me as well so mm -hmm. mgm springfield's my regular game i vlogged a lot of hours there this particular hands at two five we are 1700 effective okay uh, at the time this uh game was seven handed uh four of the six villains are regulars that i've logged uh, a lot of hours with uh, the two five player pool is actually quite small. It's very reggy game. Um, the main villain in this hand is definitely a solid player, uh, and I, I know that like five ten is their preferred level. R right, I was gonna say because they do five ten, and do they still do ten twenty sometimes there too? Yeah, they do ten twenty five a couple days a week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So pre flop uh, under the gun limps. The main villain is in the hijack uh, who over limps. And this is a very rare play from him. I've only seen him show down one over limp in the past, and he had 8-6 offsuit. Mm -hmm. um, Button also limps. And Hero is in the small blind with King of Diamonds, Jack of Diamonds. And again, it's just two blinds, right? Correct. King of Diamonds, Jack of Diamonds. So I raised to 40. King of Diamonds, Jack of Diamonds. Okay. And all villains call. So the three lumpers call. Correct. Right. I think that's pretty good sizing. I mean, yeah, I have no no issue with it. So everybody's call one, two, three, four ways to 40. So it's like 160 in the pot. Correct. Okay. Uh, the flop comes ace of hearts, 10 of diamonds, seven of diamonds. Ace of hearts, 10 of diamonds, seven of diamonds. So you flop a combo draw here. Correct. Okay. And... I did not want to see bet this hand into three villains with a gut shot to the nuts. I mean, obviously, I have high equity here with the front door flush draw. Um, so I initially planned on putting this hand into a check call line. So I checked. Mm, well, I understand what you're saying. However... This is the same. I would look. I would set this one up as the same as if somebody double flatted pre flop two or three bet double flat like call the raise and then called your three bet from all the blinds. And I've talked about this many many times, especially with a hand that you have with so much equity here. When all these guys limp in, the best hand somebody could obviously have like ace ten, right? But you usually you'll hear from that by the turn. You have a jack in your hand, which blocks ace jack. So if you assume that most people would raise pre with ace king through ace jack, maybe sometimes not ace jack, but you have a jack in your hand, and you're going to hear from someone that has ace 10 by the turn, I, I might just set this up like I'm, I'm, I'm going for a triple barrel across all three streets in a given situation if I'm not raised on the turn, because the low cards aren't necessarily bad for me. What I mean by that is, is that I can put so much pressure on somebody. Do they really want to play for their stack with ace six suited? So I might set this hand up like that. Now, I think I would probably do far less c betting if I wasn't planning ahead to do that. There's another thing that you can do here too, which is sometimes actually check raise the flop, depending on what happens. Depending on what happens, like if it were to go back call call, kind of small, you can sometimes check raise the flop and pick up a lot of dead money and then also put maximum pressure on someone as well. Now, it gets a little bit dicey, obviously, three, three ways how you're going to get through all these guys, but it sometimes will make you look stronger if you start it off you're betting into three people, maybe one guy calls, and then you're going bet, bet. Even if two people call, 
it's not the worst thing in the world if you pound the turn on a low card and then you get another folder and somebody's still in there and maybe they raise off with ace 10 quite a bit by the turn and then you know you can decide whether or not you actually want to go through with it but i i normally would uh on the river now i know you have like front door diamonds and stuff like that but th that's how normally i set up a configuration like this from a double flat or when somebody's pre-flop range is somewhat capped even though i'm not a huge fan of that word capped but okay so you checked right. Right. that that all makes sense mm -hmm. um under the gun also checked uh the hijack uh, who's the main villain i uh, referred to earlier uh bet 60. so hijack bet 60 that's kind of in between okay right uh button folds okay and as the action was happening uh, i started to think about what strong hands the hijack could have on this board and uh, this player in particular i don't think is they're never trapping pre-flop with aces they don't have tens they don't have ace 10. i don't think they even have sevens so i pivoted from what i initially planned and i did go for the check raise so button uh, folds right but unfolded yep and i raised the 200. so you did one yes i mean so you did that sort of second option i mean you were looked at this more like okay well it's kind of two it's kind of the same type of thing that i was kind of thinking about but just more looking at it like Oh, I'll just do this with a check raise, as opposed to, as opposed to a uh, bet, bet, bet. The only thing I would say about this is that if someone does have an ace, somehow, then obviously, it's less likely that you have pocket ace. Now you could have ten, ten. I mean, that's a Correct. hand that might make some sense. So, you, so you check raise to how much? Two hundred. Yeah. The only thing about the only thing I would say that might lend me towards you are 1700 effective so you you are quite deep but if you started a little bit shallower the problem with sort of maximizing your fold equity here through check raising is you build the pot up early and then you sometimes will run out of money to bluff somebody if they stick around on the turn you know what i'm saying like if you started with like 1200 and then all of a sudden you check raise at 200 and they call and then you bet like 400 on the turn and then they call and now the pot's like 1300 and they only have like 600 left now here you have 1700 so you, there you could shape it you know in a in a decent fashion so okay so you check raise to 200. Mm -hmm. uh, under the gun folds and the hijack calls okay so utg folds and the hijack calls so he calls pretty quickly or uh less than 10 seconds all right hijack calls so the pot is now 560. 560. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the turn is the nine of spades. So the nine of spades here on the turn looks like that gives you actually a double gutter now, right? It does. Yeah. So you pick up a double gutter here. And so what do you think his bet calling range is in this spot? It's weak aces, eight, nine. Maybe he has pocket sevens. But I, I, I really didn't think that like in game, and he could be continuing with other diamond draws, like, a, now, like low low diamonds, five four of diamonds, for example. So if you're gonna bet this turn and he call and let's say he calls again, are you gonna go for it on a blank river? That was the plan. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you got to get nine, eight nine to fold out too. I mean, it would suck to bet here and then eight nine calls and then. You don't go for it. Okay, so the pot's 560, ace, 10, 7, front door diamonds, turns the nine of spades, okay, yeah. I bet 300. Now, in game, I thought about going larger to have like a more of a geometric sizing on the river. So mm -hmm. what, but I thought that 300 would have comparable fold equity compared to like 400. What are your thoughts on that? I don't think it has comparable fold equity right now. I mean, I was just about to say, I can't imagine a hand that goes back call on the flop that folds here for 300. I can imagine some hands that fold for like 500. I I, I mean, it, he's, I mean, you could talk about like, he's supposed to fold probably a lot of ASAX now on the turn. When, when on this turn card, like say for example, he had ace four, three suited or something like, or ace four suited. And he thought that, like, if I was your opponent 
and I bet, and you check race, and I was like, I don't know what this guy's doing. And then I call specifically on this turn card I'm talking about. It's a really bad turn card for a weak ace that doesn't really pick up a straight draw, like ace, deuce through ace five. And and I don't even ace six. I mean, it picks up a gut shot, but towards the ass end of it. So I, I don't I don't I don't necessarily hundred I don't hundred percent agree with you. Because I don't know what full tier for 300. Fair. In retrospect, I definitely agree. So he calls again or what? He called. All right. So hijack calls. And now it's 1160. And you've put in 550. So you've got like, yes. Yeah, so you have like a, a pot size bet left, right? Yeah, exactly. Pot size bet. So right. if you had gone 500, the pot and he called, the pot would have been like, 1500 and then you would have had like 950 left which is kind of a good like sort of two-thirds ish and then 400 you know sort of in between all right 1160 to the river and the river is a six of hearts so it puts a one-liner out there to an eight it does oh god i think you have to give up now i think you have to give up now because you you know when you sent me this hand i didn't even recognize that uh, you know, some, like I said, I'll read through the hands and, and very, very briefly because I don't want to ruin them. And for some reason in my head, it clicked that this was a brick. Like, I think this would be more interesting if it was like an offsuit deuce because now I think you have to give up. But like you said, like there's going to be some eight nines here. Although you did bet, I don't know, you kind of bet small on the turn, so you wonder if a lingering ace axe is still lingering around. But the problem becomes in a spot like this that even a lingering ace axe might get curious because you're betting a one liner to a straight, and then everybody else thinks that, like, you know, you would only bet, you know, that you're bluffing here because no one would take a set here for this for this line. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I don't think this is one of the good cards for you. So the eights that the villain has are ace eight and nine eight. Right. Or some... I don't ever have an ace eight. Um, but if we were to go back to the flop, is there any merit to taking a hand like seven, eight of hearts with like the backdoor heart draw and using that as a check race bluff? Are you raising that out of the small blind though after three limpers pre? That would be a mix. <laughs> for, for pre, mix. like I sometimes yes, sometimes no. Really? Oh, okay. I'm, a lot of people are going to limp a lot. I just, I'm just. I, I, just, I hate over. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I'd rather just collect the blinds out of the small uh, blind. No, I, I yeah. I mean, sure. I guess you could. I mean, not. I, I mean, think it's not. I mean, sure. Any type of hand that might have some backdoor. Uh, backdoor, and again, you know, if you want to say, well, I'm going to take some sort of hand here and do this because everyone's sort of cap pre flop, sure, but you might be out leveling yourself here a little okay. bit. <laughs> All right, understandable. I so I, I did end up jamming, and um, the villain tanks forever. And his immediate reaction was, he said out loud, was, I just don't see how you have very many made hands here. I, I mean, that's, I mean, again, like, what would. Would you do this with, I mean, actually one of the worst hands. I mean, it would be much better, I think, to do this with 10-10 than with ace-ace. Because, you know, villain could have aces up more often. Where if you have aces, ace-ace, then you have to start to think, mm, maybe he does have more like 8x. But he sort of is saying out loud what I'm talking about is that if nobody else has taken a set here, because like... When you check raise the flop, right? Most of like your value hands are going to be sets or like ace 10, right? Correct. And it, with a lot of sets, and most guys aren't going to take this line with sets and ace 10 by the river. So then when you go back to the flop and you put your you, yourself on a range, then it's like, or you've got what you have, which is some sort of busted out combo draw. Now, there aren't many combos. Of that, there's only like three, right? Like queen, jack of diamonds, king, jack of diamonds, and like king, queen, but still. Right. Okay. 
I just don't think you have much ADX here. Someone said you could have ace, eight of diamonds. I don't, I don't think you're going to check raise ace, eight of diamonds on the flop. No, I right? wouldn't. Right. So you have to really, really go down the weeds for you to have, I mean, for what the guy is saying, you know? Right. So I, I care about like building bankroll and moving up stakes. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm playing as balanced as I possibly can. And so uh, in this scenario, I'm, I'm thinking about like, what bluffs do I have? Like it, what bluff do I have on this river? Sorry, I'm trying to balance my what the fuck look. Balance, balance. No, <laughs> I had to fly. I had to pop. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Repeat the question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what, 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 what you, what? Uh, I, I, I got. I was distracted by your use of the word balance a little bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to balance uh -huh. my my approach between just value and bluffs. So if I were to ever be bluff, like I don't want to never be bluffing here. So if I were to be bluffing, what bluff am I using? Well, I, I don't know the exact combo. Someone says that this is the hand that the hand you have is a bluff. Benny Blanco from the Bronx says, maybe, maybe it is, but... I don't know if you have to be balanced here, though. You know what I'm saying? Like at a 2-5 game, I don't think you have to be balanced at a 5-10 MGM game. Maybe if you're playing 500 NL on PokerStars Zoom, sure. But, I mean, that's I mean, th that's my take, and that's what I've been teaching for, Jesus, it's been almost 15 years. So, anyways, what do you, did, you sound a little bit dejected. Did he call you? He did call. Okay, yeah. Yeah, at uh, Ace-5 of spades. Wow, that's a, that's, so I don't know, that's a, I mean, that's you know, obviously a crazy one. You know, the crazy, th and, and again, um, what's your name, Kevin? I think I can, here's the thing, like, I think if the river's a deuce, this gets through a lot. I think he's way more off, way more apt to fold on a brick, right? Than on, uh, than on a, you know, than on this card. Now you can see that that might be, I, I think it gets through if the river is like a deuce or a three. It's interesting if the river is like a king here and you beat some eight, nine, do you still feel like you need to bluff? Be because I think with the river being a king, just in case he had an aces up hand, you can put a really, you can put him in a really tough spot. If the river is a king, I think I would still probably bluff with King Jack of Diamonds. But um, interesting on a lot of levels, because again, on the turn, if you had bet larger, I think he has to fold. If you go like four, five, uh, 450 to 500, it re he really shouldn't continue. You sort of rope him into continuing, and then you get this weird river where the guy's like, I don't think you have an eight here, and I don't think you do this with like a set of tens or a set of aces, so I call. And then it's unfortunate that you get this river, because you had a deuce, I think it would have gotten through. All right, that makes sense. I, I yeah. see that. Yeah. So anyways, I appreciate the call. Thank you very much, Kevin. All right. Thanks, Bart.